Welcome to our virtual worship this week. My name is Tracy and this is my husband Andrew and together we are responsible for leading the Salvation Army in Southend-on-Sea. This week Tracy is focusing on just two words which we find in the middle of some verses taken from Paul's letter to the church at Colossae. Accept life. Later on in our worship Tracy will be talking about the importance of trust in our relationship with God especially when things don't seem to be going according to plan. But first of all, we are going to join together in that wonderful hymn of praise, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, set to the stirring tune, Miles Lane. Mm.
Of all the qualities that God looks for in our lives, trust is probably one of the most difficult to achieve. To trust God, we need to be aware of his presence. We need to recognise that he's with us in every situation. So to help us, we're going to listen to Eric Ball's morning song, which reminds us that Christ is here. Then Tracy is going to pray for us, and after that, we will sing together the chorus, Jesus is all I need. Let us pray together. Loving Heavenly Father, sometimes accepting life isn't always easy. Some people's lives seem to run smoothly and we look at them and we can be envious of that, but we don't see everything. Other people seem to struggle so much in life and sometimes you can look at a whole family and they seem to suffer so many different things. Father, it's easy when life is going well for us to thank you and depend upon you. Um, but it's at those times when life is difficult that it's hard to accept life as it is. 
And I just pray that you will help each of us to be able to do that, not only today, but in the days and months and years to come. May we acknowledge that you are in control of our lives when we listen to your direction and we do all that you are guiding us to do. And so help us to accept that whatever um, lies ahead of us, it is part of your plan. And so long as we are in tune with your will, then um, we can accept life knowing that you are there to bless and use us and to use us to bless other people. And so we ask that you do that now as we spend this time together worshipping you. May it glorify you. May you be blessed in all that happens today. I ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. We're now going to wait upon you for the offering as Dennis plays to us the beautiful refrain, Prayer Gently Lifts Me to Highest Heaven.
When I was growing up in the Salvation Army, one of the songs I used to love to sing, especially on a Sunday afternoon in the praise meeting, was William Pearson's stirring battle hymn, To Save the World is Our Desire for Enemies, We Pray. Sadly, this song did not make its way into the 2015 songbook. In fact, it was left out of the 1984 songbook. But if you go back to the songbook published in 1953, there it is in all its glory. I managed to find an old recording of the song and thought it would be fun to sing it today as it fits in so well with our theme. Our Bible reading today is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. As therefore God's picked representatives of the new humanity, purified and beloved of God himself, be merciful in action, kindly in heart, humble in mind. Accept life and be most patient and tolerant with one another, always ready to forgive if you have a difference with anyone. Forgive as freely as the Lord has forgiven you. And above everything else, be truly loving, for love is the golden chain of all the virtues. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, remembering that as members of the same body, you are called to live in harmony and never forget to be thankful for what God has done for you. 
Let Christ's teaching live in your hearts, making you rich in the true wisdom. Teach and help one another along the right road with your psalms and hymns and Christian songs, singing God's praises with joyful hearts. And whatever you may have to do, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, thanking God the Father through him. Mm. Amen. Colossians, J.B. Phillips puts into the mouth of Paul the instruction to accept life. I know I don't normally do this, but inspired by Andrew and to make it sound like I knew what I was talking about, I thought I would look up the original Greek word which J.B. Phillips has translated as accept life. You don't have to be a Greek scholar to do this, you just have to look up a Greek interlinear New Testament and there are plenty of those available online. If you do this, then you will discover the Greek word makrothumia. As is the case with so many Greek words, it's almost impossible to translate this word into English. Greek is such a rich language and sometimes we need to use one or more words to properly explain what was initially being said. You will find that in other versions of scripture, this word is translated as patience. Instead of telling the Christians to accept life, Paul tells them to be patient. There are other versions of the Bible where you will find this word translated as long-suffering. 
The problem is that in English, over time, as is the case with any language really, words change their meaning. I can remember when I was a young singing company leader, a retired brigadier being completely shocked when she heard the children sing in the chorus, it's great, great, brill, brill, wicked, wicked, skill, skill, to have a friend like Jesus. To her, the word wicked had very negative connotations. Of course, today we hardly ever sing that chorus, if at all, because language has moved on. And if we were going to sing it today, we'd probably have to sing something like, it's great, great, sick, sick, to have a friend like Jesus. The word patience has probably over time lost something of its power. We tell children eager for Christmas or queuing for an ice cream to be patient, suggesting that they won't have to wait long to get the object of their desire. Long suffering is a word that we don't really use at all today, but one which probably is closer to the original meaning than patient. The word long suffering suggests having to wait some considerable time before things change. For the Greeks, the word translated as either patient or long suffering was actually used to describe not a human characteristic, but a divine one. In Galatians, where Paul describes the fruit of the Spirit, we see the same word being used. We know that the fruit of the Spirit describes divine characteristics. Although they're seen in the life of a believer, they are a consequence of God's presence within. J.B. Phillips wrote his paraphrase of the New Testament initially because he wanted the young people in his church to be able to engage with the biblical text. He wanted them to understand what God had to say to them. He wanted them to be able to apply what they read to their own lives. So instead of patience or long suffering, he chose the words accept life. I wonder how good you are at accepting life. I think I would have to say that in our house, Andrew is better at accepting life than the rest of us. Perhaps he has an advantage in that he sees life in a very black and white way. It's what it is. And if you can't change your circumstances, then worrying about them or fretting is wasted emotional energy. I wouldn't describe myself as a worrier, but neither would I say that I'm particularly good at accepting life. I know there are times when things happen, when people say things, when circumstances arise, where there is nothing I can do to change the situation. But that doesn't stop me from sometimes getting worked up by things that are outside of my control. How do we get to a position where we can accept life? I think we need to look at the context that surround these words. Let me read to you again the passage we shared earlier. As therefore God's picked representatives of the new humanity, purified and beloved of God himself, be merciful in action, kindly in heart, humble in mind. Accept life and be most patient and tolerant with one another. Always remember to forgive if you have a difference with anyone. Forgive as freely as the Lord has forgiven you. And above everything else, be truly loving, for love is the golden chain of all the virtues. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, remembering that as members of the same body, you are called to live in harmony. And never forget to be thankful for what God has done for you. Let Christ's teaching live in your hearts, making you rich in the true wisdom. Teach and help one another along the right road with your psalms and hymns and Christian songs singing God's praises with joyful hearts. And whatever you may have to do, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, thanking God the Father through him. These words are so familiar to us that it is easy to read them 
and miss some of the bigger issues addressed by Paul that often prevent us from accepting life. When somebody offends you, how easy do you find it to forgive them? I don't have any data to support this claim, but I would imagine, based on personal experience and observation, that the actions of other people, especially when those actions are unkind, prevent us more than anything else from accepting life and moving on. When we refuse to forgive someone, we're not in any way compelling them to face up to the consequences of their actions. In fact, the impact of our refusal to forgive probably doesn't affect them at all. But unforgiveness in the heart of a Christian will fester and eat away at our faith. Do you remember what Jesus said to the disciples about bringing gifts to the altar? In Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 to 24, we read the following. You have heard that it was said to the people in the old days, you shall not murder, and anyone who does must stand his trial. But I say to you that anyone who is angry with his brother must stand his trial. Anyone who contemptuously calls his brother a fool must face the Supreme Court. And anyone who looks on his brother as a lost soul is himself heading straight for the fire of destruction. So that if, while you are offering your gift at the altar, you should remember that your brother has something against you, you must leave your gift there before the altar and go away. Make your peace with your brother first, then come and offer your gift. As we constantly remind ourselves, there is nothing we can do that will stop God from loving us. But we can, if we're not careful through bearing a grudge, separate ourselves from experiencing his love. In 1 John 2 verse 11 we read, the man who loves his brother lives and moves in the light and has no reason to stumble. But the man who hates his brother is shut off from the light and gropes his way in the dark without seeing where he is going. The move in the dark, sorry, to move in the dark is to move blindfold. In the Bible reading we shared earlier, Paul encourages us to forgive each other, to put up with each other and to help and encourage each other. This is something we can do, which will help put us into a position where we can accept life. Paul also stresses the importance of harmony, linking the presence of God's peace to unity. Do you remember the disciples when they were out fishing and they were caught in a storm? Jesus was asleep in the boat and they were frightened that they were all going to drown. When Jesus was woken, he despaired at their lack of faith and calmed the wind and waves. How often in our lives do we forget that Jesus is with us in the middle of the storm? Sometimes in order to accept life, we have to wake him up so that we can bring a sense of hope and calm to our circumstances. Paul encourages the Colossians to let the teachings of Christ live in their hearts, something Paul says will result in true wisdom. But he also stresses that we can't expect such wisdom to help us if we try to experience it in is excuse me, isolation from the rest of the faith community. He tells us to encourage each other along the right road with our Christian songs and psalms. I don't want to spend too long on this because Andrew spoke a lot about encouragement last week. But allowing Christ's teaching to live in our hearts and sharing that teaching with each other in a positive way are both things that will ultimately help us to accept life. Finally, Paul tells the Colossians to remember to say thank you. I know it's old fashioned and a little cliched, but there probably is no greater or more profitable spiritual exercise than counting your blessings. No matter how difficult things become, there is usually something that we can find to be grateful for. In essence, the more I looked at these verses, the more I began to realise that accepting life happens when we start to look outwards. 
Earlier I used the illustration of standing in the queue for ice cream. Now I'm assuming that the level of patience with which the children wait will largely be determined by their age and maturity. I could imagine somebody standing in a queue for ice cream in their 80s encouraging their great-grandchild to recognise that although they are having to wait, those ahead of them in the queue are already enjoying their ice creams. It's exactly the same in a church setting. It's the immature Christians who get easily frustrated when things don't go their own way. And it's the old saints who are more inclined to be long-suffering. Of course, we mustn't confuse age with maturity. Sadly, the two don't always go together. In summary, if we're quick to forgive each other, if we put the needs of each other before our own needs, if we live lives based on the teachings of Jesus, and if we look for every opportunity to encourage each other and be thankful, we will find it much easier to accept life. I know I've shared this from the platform before, but I don't think we've shared it in virtual worship. But a good few years ago now, there was an article in the Daily Telegraph about longevity. The writer of the article, who had been looking at longevity as part of her PhD, discovered that many of those in the UK who were over 90 had active links to the Salvation Army. These links were not the focus of her research and so she didn't look into them in any great depth but came to the conclusion that perhaps it was down to the fact that we didn't drink alcohol, didn't smoke, drank lots of tea which is full of antioxidants and perhaps most importantly of all had outward looking lives. Qualities like fear, anxiety, doubt, impatience, anger and bitterness are all to do with me and how I feel. It's when I begin to focus on the needs of others that my circumstances become less important and supported by God's grace and the example of Jesus, I am able to accept life. We're going to sing a beautiful song now written by Richard Gillard, which describes the sentiments of someone who has learnt the secret behind being able to accept life. Each of the verses we're going to sing has value, but let me finish my sermon by quoting the last verse, which says, Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I might have the grace to let you be my servant too. God bless you.
Thank you once again for joining us today. I know we say it all the time, but we really don't take your presence mm. for granted. And I'm grateful that you take the time to join with us each week. I hope that this week God will give you the grace and the strength you need mm. to accept life as you put your trust in mm. him. Amen. In John 16, 33, Jesus acknowledges the difficulties that we will face as his followers when he tells the disciples that in this world they will find trouble. But he doesn't leave it there. He goes on to say, take courage, for I have overcome the world, which leads us nicely into our closing song, which finishes with that same statement, Christ has overcome the world. use the following benediction more than any other whether we're preparing online worship or leading in-person worship there is something about saint Teresa's prayer which seems to touch a certain spot in the heart of a christian and in the light of all we've shared today we just didn't feel we could finish mm. with any other than this prayer god bless you god bless you and stay safe